you happy now? Are you glad that you've taken everything? Take it all from me. I deserve it. Here, take my golden key too. King of Oldham, my lord. Please, come back from the edge. Nanda? Please, my lord. I can't do it anymore, Nanda. I can't go on. You must, for the sake of the kingdom. Ev needs you. I have failed, Ev. No, no, you haven't. I have failed, Ev. I have failed my family. And now I must pay for my failures. In blood. No. Stop trying to stop me, Nanda. Uh, Ending your life will not bring them back, and if they were ever to return, they would be too distraught. They to... will never come back to Ev. My family is gone. Forever. They are the prisoners of the Noom King, and it's it's all my fault. I, I, I know, my lord. The only way I can appease my guilt is to end my life. It's more than I deserve. And you know what rule in your place? What will become of the land of Ev? I... The only one left is Langwadir. And you know what she will do to Ev if she takes the throne. That is no longer my concern. Have you no concern for your people, my lord? How can I have any concern for my people when I had none for my family, huh? Goodbye, Nanda. My lord, stop. I'm begging you, please, don't... Don't do this. Pay for my soul, for I am certain it is destined for eternal damnation. My lord! Ah! My lord, no! No. Crossover Adventure Productions presents The Chronicles of Oz. Episode 1 Once upon a time, when the world was freshly made and sparkling new, there lived a troop of powerful fairies that travelled the earth, spreading their magic and doing good. And the leader of the fairies was Queen Lurleen. One day, as the fairies explored the great continent of Nonestica, they found themselves crossing a great desert. So vast were the shifting sands that they soon grew weary even fairies must rest from time to time. But to the fairies' dismay, they found that they could not land. For the sands had been bewitched by gnomes and would turn anyone to dust who would dare to set foot on them. But Queen Lurleen was not one to be defeated. She created a single emerald jewel from the air and planted it on the deadly sand. And from that one seed, a magical country grew with trees and mountains and magic and wonders of all the colours of the rainbow. She declared the land of Fairyland, as fairies are wont to do, and her group were able to rest for a while and bask in its marvellousness. But the fairies soon grew bored and expressed a desire to continue on their way. So Queen Lurleen, not wishing to abandon the magic land entirely, left one fairy to care for it. A baby fairy who was called Ozma, and she named the land Oz in the baby's honour. And so the band of fairies flew away, leaving Ozma, later known as Ozma the First, to build the foundations of the marvellous land of Oz. And what are you going to do, Princess Ozma? A little to the left, please, Jack. Okay, Dad. Your Highness. Dad, which way is... Left is still that way. Thank you. Your Highness, I asked you a question. Did you? Yes. Well, I'll be trying not to fall out of my chariot, naturally. Making sure my tiara sits properly. Practicing my wave. That's not what I mean. I'll be performing the duties all monarchs are supposed to perform. Just, you know, further afield. Okay, Jack, now you're too far left. 
Go the other way. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> it's okay, Jack. But you have duties here, in Oz, in the Emerald City, and I don't mean directing your pumpkin head to hang a picture. It's a very important picture, Mr. Amby. It's a thoroughly unimportant picture, and your highness... It's a magic picture! Well, not yet, but it will be. <laughs> Concentrate, Jack. You're hanging it crooked. My lady. Omby. I've done all I can for Oz right now. I'm very confident I can leave the day-to-day -day running of the country in your capable hands. But and meanwhile, our neighbours have asked for help. Our neighbours can sort themselves out, quite frankly. Where's your charitable spirit? It died a painful death the day someone from outside of Oz turned up and started killing rulers. She only killed the bad ones. Ombi, it is time we opened our borders. Oz has been cut off from the rest of the world for far too long. Between the wizard's inward-looking policies and the dramas in Munchkinland... Exactly. Dramas that have not yet ceased. The war is long over. You saw to that personally, if I remember. We have yet to establish a stable government in Munchkinland, my lady. Didn't you send our best expert there to help with that? Yes, I did. And he hasn't managed to irritate the whole population yet, has he? Not yet, but he's well on his way. Did you read the latest report from the Wogglebug? <clears throat> He wants to establish a new title for the role of Munchkin leader. Well, Wicked Witch of the East probably doesn't pull well. Dad? He wants to call it a mayor instead. Mayor of the Munchkin city? In the county of the land of Oz, yes. I'm... I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Stop, Dad! And when he inevitably proves that he doesn't and single-handedly starts another revolution, that's when we're going to need our queen. Princess... Sorry, Your Highness. I'm not queen until I'm crowned, remember? Pretty sure that's not how it works, my lady. Dad! I'm gonna drop the picture! Oh, sorry, Jack. Yes, that's a good sport. Put it there. Why does he keep calling you Dad? Because she is my dad. Don't fight it. It's not worth the headache. And anyway, that's why I should definitely go to Ev. Because the pumpkin head calls you Dad. So I can prove I could be a monarch with some oomph in her. Seriously, Ombi. You've got the Emerald City under control. The Wogglebug will be setting up the Munchkin government for ages. And we're crisis-free for the first time in a year. There's no better time for a royal tour. Responding to a vague distress call from across the desert, we don't even know if it's genuine. Nobody's heard from the royal family of Ev for generations. Nobody's heard of any of our foreign neighbours for generations. The wizard cut off all contact. And what about the danger? What danger? Ev is just across the desert. The deadly desert. How do you propose to cross that? Oh, Glinda's arranged something. <laughs> it's brilliant. And that's not the only danger that could await you. What if... Oh, what if? What if? I hate what ifs. Anything could happen out there. That's the point. That's why I have to go. Dad, I'm done. I've hung up your picture. Very good job, Jack. It looks splendid. It's a painting. It's hardly a great piece of art. It will be once I'm finished with it. What are you going to do? Tap into some fairy magic. Let me concentrate. Oh, damn it! What were you supposed to do? Make it into a visual portal so I could see... It doesn't matter. It didn't work. I just can't seem to access fairy magic like I should. Maybe you just don't have enough power. Chip could do it. Sort of. When we shared ahead, we could do teleports and transformations, and not to mention the powder of life. But you are Chip, I thought. Apparently not as much as I thought I was. And how could you possibly consider leaving the safety of the Emerald City? If the one advantage you have, that you're a descendant of a fairy queen, if that isn't working for you... It'll be fine, Ombi. And I'm not going alone, am I? I'll have help. Oh? <laughs> See? What could possibly go wrong? So observant. Do you think they're here to see Princess Osma off on her journey? Uh, no, Lion. There's a half-price sale on statue repair and they don't want to miss out. Really? I said I'd pay for the statue. Do you think Osma was mad? Osma doesn't get mad. Ombi Ambi was mad, though. Ombi Ambi was turning 16 shades of purple. Oh, I'm used to him being irritated with me. I used to be his boss, you know. Yes, yes we, we know. know. 
I've mentioned it before, have I? Once or twice. An hour. You were king of Oz. We get it. Move on. Fine, fine. Be like that. You see how you feel when you're in charge of a big city? We are. <clears throat> king of the forest. Emperor of the Winkies. Great. Rub it in, thanks. Ozma's taking her time. You're eager to hit the road, eh? Well, it's not like I've had an adventure in a while. You lot left me out on the last one. We didn't mean to, Lion. Yes, we're so terribly sorry we didn't include you when we were attacked by munchkins and fleeing for our lives on a flying couch. And so you should be. But you're here for this one. The three of us, together again, just like the old days. Only without... well, you know. Yeah, it would have been nice to have Dorothy along too. Well, I'm afraid I can't manage that. But you can have me, if you like. Your Highness. <laughs> Look at all these people. For me? Of course, my lady. No, there's a half-price sale on statue repair. Lion! Hello, everyone! Are we all ready for an adventure? You bet! Whenever you're ready, my lady. Your Highness, please. Ombi, for the last time, stop fussing. We will be fine. Famous last words. It's okay, Ozma. He didn't like me running away from the Emerald City either. You fussy old fusspot. Look, I may be a fussy old fusspot, but at least I have the well-being of the Aussian people at heart. Dad, Dad, you left me behind with a magic picture. Jack, you didn't think I'd go without saying goodbye to you. I wish I was going on the adventure with you. Well, there's no reason why you couldn't. No, uh, you crazy Osma, you remember the last time. Ah, uh, look, Jack, I really need you to stay here and look after Ombi Ambi. Don't I, Ombi? I... But Don't the... I, Ombi? Oh, Mr. Ambi, we're going to have so much fun together. We'll walk around the palace and see all the shops and play coits. Maybe I can leave you with Faramond. Whatever works, Ombi. Is this it, Dad? Is this the magic chariot you were telling me about? It sure is. Another one of Glinda's little creations. I was wondering how you were going to get us across the deadly desert without us turning into dust. I was hoping you were going to make us another flying gum. <laughs> not this time, Scarecrow. Is it self-driving? Not quite. It has to be pulled. By what? <laughs> oh, that thing? It's the sawhorse! Oh, now I do have to object. What? Don't you like the sawhorse, zombie? I had hoped we'd not be dealing with that thing again. Well, me too, if I'm honest. It doesn't look so bad. For a wooden horse. You didn't have to ride it. Are you all going to complain like this the whole trip? We're going to have an adventure. Let's get excited. All aboard, gentlemen. <sighs> well, I'm excited, aren't you? It's going to be a long journey if we're doing this by land. There's a lot of desert between us and him. Well, how about we sing some cheery songs to make the time go faster? I'll start. We're off On second thoughts, I think I should stay behind. Too late. We're ready to go. Farewell, my people. We're off to the land of Ev to assist our royal cousins in their time of great need. <clears throat> Good luck to you, Minus. Have a great time, Dad. Look after my city for me, you two. Sawhorse, take us away. Oh, I told you it was fast. I Bye, Dad. Bye, Sawhorse and Scarecrow and Tin Man and Lion. Have fun. I'll never forget that sight, seeing the Emerald citizens lining the streets, cheering as I went past, waving flags, smiling like crazy. I made sure I took the time to appreciate the goodwill of the people. They love their future queen, and I waved back, smiling and happy and, well, you know. They like me! They really like me! They like Ozma, you idiot! Are you saying they don't like me? Shut up! <laughs> so we paraded through the city streets. Faster than I had liked, but nobody's been able to slow that sawhorse down yet. In due course, we passed through the Great Western Gate and bade our farewells to the people of the Emerald City. Once clear of the city, the sawhorse was finally able to really show us his speed. Brakes! You forgot to install the brakes! We started the trek through Oz, moving northwest across Winkland. This, of course, gave the Tin Woodman an opportunity to educate us of the finer details of his realm. Sort of. Oh, that's a yellow butterfly. Its wings can provide us... Where? Back there. Oh, I missed it. We all missed it. How could you miss it? It was right there. How can you see anything at this speed? Well, as I was saying, its wings have magical properties. And should, should we go back so the Tin Woodman can show us his butterfly properly? Do you really think we should turn around just for a yellow butterfly, Scarecrow? Oh, I suppose not. I can always show you on our way back. That sounds thrilling. Wait, Sawhorse! Veer left! 
left. According to the map, if we're aiming for the desert, we should go left. Keep going straight and we'll get into Ugaru land. You don't want to take tea with Queen Anne? Do I even need to dignify that with a response? What's wrong with the Ugaru Queen? Don't ask. Sawhorse! I said the left! Head towards the desert. I have a bad feeling about this desert. You have a bad feeling about everything. But it's a deadly desert. One touch and we turn to sand. We've thought of that. Glinda's magic, you said. But you didn't say what or how it'll work. Have you ever known one of Glinda's spells to go wrong? There's always a first time. Look, there we are. Right ahead of us. Sawhorse, slow down. Sawhorse! Oh, no. <laughs> Whose idea was that dumb horse anyway? It's a long story. Well, Princess Ozma, what now? I smiled and pulled out of my pocket a small square of green carpet, no bigger than a handkerchief. I'm not one to make jokes about size, Ozma, but I don't think that's going to do the job. It's not how big it is, it's where you stick it and what you whisper to it to make it grow. Fine, you make the dirty jokes then. Rinky tinky little pinky woo. To the boy's amazement, the square shimmered and glistened with magic. It hovered in the air above my palm, then whooshed away, growing and transforming until it became a long green carpet unrolling itself ahead of us into the deadly desert. It placed itself at the sawhorse's feet, inviting it to step aboard. Well, good work, Glinda. Is it going to be long enough to stretch all the way from here to Ev? It'll roll along underneath us as we go. Come on, sawhorse, it's okay. Step onto the magic carpet. I don't blame it, to be honest. Sawhorse, come on. Just think how much you can run when you get into that open desert. Tentatively, the sawhorse took its first steps onto the magic carpet. And to everyone's surprise, nothing happened. It worked! We didn't turn into dust! Can I open my eyes now? With no roads or trees or innocent bystanders around to get in its way, the sawhorse was able, for the first time in its life, to run at full speed. The crazy wooden horse sped across the deadly desert at full pelt. And the four of us settled into the back of the chariot, laughing and enjoying the brilliant weather and the start of a new adventure. A girl, a scarecrow, a tin man and a lion travelling together to visit a mysterious monarch in a strange land. Sound familiar at all? I've never seen a lake this huge before. It's not a lake, Lion. That's... that's the ocean. The what? No way. I knew we were covering a lot of desert, but damn. I, I've never seen an ocean before. None of us have. I didn't think it would be so... so big. It just goes on and on, doesn't it? According to the Wogglebug's map, I believe this stretch of water is called Baffin's Bay. Ah, hurrah for Baffin's Bay. Right. Do we need a boat? No, no. We head down the beach that way. We're on the borders of Ev. Look, up over that dune, there's grass. So we've crossed the desert? Looks like. Wow. Can... Look, can we get a move on? I know it's over there, but all that water makes me nervous. Don't you think we should rest for a while? We've come such a long way already. Have I mentioned what water does to me? Sawhorse, would you like a rest? <laughs> He's like us, Ozma. He doesn't need rest. Well, I like to have a rest from the travelling. I'm starting to see things. You are? Yes. I thought I saw a crate or something about a mile that way down the coast. Well, that's not impossible. It might have fallen off a boat and washed ashore. Maybe a bird dropped it. Big bird. Like a jackdaw. Does it matter? Can we just go, please? Fine. Sawhorse, bring us up over the grassy hill there. Let's put all the sand behind us. Back over there. The desert stretches back almost as far as the ocean does. Imagine how quick our trip would have been if we had this carrier when we first met. It'd be fun getting this thing over the river. We could have just jumped over it, probably. No need for that raft. Don't talk to me about that raft. I nearly drowned on that thing, you know. You nearly drowned? You weren't the one who actually got into the river. I got 
stuck on a pole, though. Remember the pole? We all remember the pole. But you survived. Only because of Dorothy. Talking that stork garden to rescuing me. And then she did that thing, you know, ooh, with the... Ooh, with the forehead and the zing. The stork girl was all... Ah! And she was all, tell the wizard I'm coming to see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old Dorothy. She sounds brilliant. Is anyone else hungry? I'm a... Yes, I know, you two don't eat. Lion? I'm good, thanks. I think I already ate what Ombi packed for us. I wonder if there's any natural sustenance around here. Natural sustenance? What's she going to eat? Berries? Ozma, wait until we get to Castle Ev. Hey, can you see that? What? Back over there on the sand. Those markings. Is it... Are they words? How would you even write words on a deadly desert? Very carefully. Lion, your eyes are better than mine. Because they're painted on. Because they're painted on, yes. You should be able to read them better than any of us. It says... Be... Where... Beware the... Wheelers. Well... What's a wheeler? Still hungry, I made my way further inland towards a field of strangely shaped trees where I thought there must be some sort of natural food. I didn't really want to meet the King of Ev with a rumbly tummy, of course. No doubt he'd throw us a big banquet upon our arrival. But for now, roughing it would have to do. The first few trees I found weren't that interesting. Cottonwood, eucalyptus and so on. But then two large trees caught my eye. One was covered with square paper boxes growing in clusters from every branch. Some of them were tiny and green, but there were other bigger ones turning orange. And on the biggest and reddest of the boxes, I could see the word lunch written in neat raised letters. A lunch tree. The tree next to it was similar, only it bore tin containers with dinner written on them. They were so full and heavy, the branches bent under their weight. Both trees had leaves that were napkins. I have a feeling we're not in Oz anymore. I reached up to the lunch tree. Obviously, it was still a bit early for dinner. And noticed a couple of snap branches. Someone had eaten at this tree before. Well, if I'm not the only one eating here, it must be safe, right? <laughs> Nothing ventured, Ozma. Ozma, yoo-hoo! What's a wheeler? Huh? Have you ever heard of a wheeler? It's like a horseless chariot thing, isn't it? Like the wizard tried to invent a few years ago. Well, it makes sense to beware them, I guess. Huh? Just a warning we found. What are you doing? Lunch. Lunch? From this tree, look. It's brilliant. It's got a ham sandwich, a bit of sponge cake, a slice of cheese and an apple. Oh, and a pickle. Anyone want a pickle? You just picked a random lunchbox off a tree and started eating it. Well, not the pickle. No. <laughs> Hate pickles. You're going to make yourself sick. How do you even know if it's ripe? You can make yourself sick by eating green things, you know. Of course it's ripe. Doesn't that look ripe to you? Not at all green. Well, except the pickle. That has to be green. Oh, seriously, someone just take the pickle or I'm just throwing it away. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll eat the pickle. I don't like the sound of this. Me neither. They're the wheelers. How do you know they're the wheelers? What else could they be? We're about to find out. Get behind me, Ozma. Thief! Thief! You're thieving! Thieving! Thieves! All of you! We are not. We haven't stolen anything. Have to, have to. I peered around the tin woodman to get a better look at the creatures. They were like men. Except they walked. Well, rolled on all fours. Their legs were the same length as their arms. So they looked like wild beasts. They wore bright embroidered clothing and straw hats and, oh yeah, they had wheels for hands and feet. I don't mean they held on to wheels or had skates on. Their arms extended down into round spinning castles that they used to encircle us. What are we supposed to have stolen? Don't deny it! You can't deny it! We saw you! We saw you! I say again, what do you think we've stolen? Not you! Her. Me? I haven't stolen anything either. Well, there was the pattern of life. But... That was a tip. Don't encourage them. Answer me. What are you accusing her of? She stole. She stole. I'm getting a bit sick of this. They're making me dizzy. Leave us alone. I'm Princess Ozma, a stranger in your country, and we have done you no harm. No harm? No harm? Did you not pick our lunch boxes and dinner pails? Have you not a stolen lunch box in your hand? I... I only took one. No excuse! No excuse! It is forbidden to pick dinner pails and lunchboxes. I was hungry. 
I didn't know they were yours. No excuse. It's the law. Anyone who picks a lunchbox without permission must die. Must die. Must die. Good work, Ozma. How was I to know? Don't believe them, Your Highness. I doubt the trees belong to these creatures. They're fit for mischief and will probably try to kill us anyway. Thanks. That makes me feel much better. Really? No. I'd like to see them try and hurt you. <laughs> Axes can't hurt us. Nothing can hurt us. You should see what we did to the last little girl who tried to steal from us. You should see. You should see. And her little bird, too. I ain't no bird. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me, Osma. I'll protect you. <laughs> with what? You're made of straw. Stand still, you little punks. <laughs> He's not winning, is he? Fine, well, maybe you should... Oh, you know. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Run away! Run away! Run away! <laughs> nice work, Lion. This was nothing. These things are easily scared of. And easily caught. Let me go! Let me go! Not until you tell me why you were sent here. You don't think they're just bandits? I doubt it. Highway robbers do exist, you know, even in Oz. Yeah, but I'm playing a hunch. Come on, spill. Who's your boss? The king? Who's sending you out here to kill anyone who touches these trees? Nobody! We always work alone! You can do better than that. He could be telling the truth. He's not. Have a look at the bottom of that lunchbox if you don't believe me. What? Just turn it over. What do you see? It's... Oh. What is it? A letter E. It's stamped on. They're on all the lunchboxes on this tree. It's the royal mark of the House of Ev. They're royal property? So I really doubt these guys are guarding these trees out of patriotic duty alone. So I'll ask one more time, and then I start hacking off wheels. Why is the King of Ev sending you to protect these trees? The, the King? No, not the King. The King is dead. It is the Princess. Princess? But King Evaldo rules Ev, doesn't he? Evaldo is dead. Long live the Princess. Which Princess, Wheeler? The Languidia. Princess Languidia? I've never heard of her. Have you, Scarecrow? No. She's the dead King's closest relation. She's the only one left. Let me go! Only one left? What happened to the Queen? The Prince? The Royal Family? Let me go! Let me go! Answer her! They're lost! Lost! Lost to the Gnome King! I had no idea things were so bad here. Who's the Gnome King? I've only heard stories, but if he's responsible for killing the entire Royal Family... We need to get to the capital of Ev. Right away! Isn't that where we're going? Yes, and we haven't any more time to lose. Let him go, Tin Woodman. We've learned all we can. As you wish. You'll never survive! Languidia will get you! She always gets you! <laughs> Charming fellow. I don't like the sound of this princess. Me neither. Which is why I want to meet her for myself. Back to the chariot, everyone! She's about to get a royal visit. We ordered the sawhorse to carry us onward through Ev through the forest and out the other side where we soon came into Evna, the capital city of Ev. As we made our way down the streets of the city, questions soon came to our attention. Where is everyone? Maybe it's a holiday? You'd think with a holiday everyone would be out celebrating. Maybe it's not a holiday. Everyone's at work. Except the shop people. There's empty merchant stands and look, there's an empty tavern. When is a tavern empty? Something's wrong. I don't like it. And that's why we came here, wasn't it? I would have expected some sort of reception, if nothing else. They invited the Princess of Oz to visit. Don't they roll out a green carpet? It's a good thing we brought our own then, isn't it? Sawhorse! Take a left here. Follow the signs for Castle Ebb. I need to find out who's actually in charge. It was at the castle where we found out why the streets were deserted. Massing at the giant castle doors, was the whole population of Evna. Men, women, children, all standing at the gates, calling and yelling for someone's attention. They were not happy. Let us in, Languidir. Open the gates. Come on. Excuse me, what's happening? We're waiting for the princess. You mean this Languidir? She's going to address you? Oh, she will if she knows what's good for her. Come out and face your people, Languidir. We're still your people. Excuse me, what's your name? Nanda. Nanda, that's no way to speak to your ruler. Well, then maybe our ruler should think about how she speaks to us. I mean, everyone knows she doesn't want to be in charge. And that's fine, right? We, we don't particularly want her to be in charge either. We'd much rather have King of Oldo back. 
She was crazy, but the old queen kept her in check. So. What happened to Evaldo? Where have you been? Evaldo died months ago. He, he died. Well, what about his family? He had a son, didn't he? It's just Languedere left. And frankly, the Gnome King stole the wrong family members. Wait, the Gnome King stole them? I'm sure the princess is doing everything she can under the circumstances. No, no, she's not, actually. And trust me, I was in there working in the castle. I've, I've seen it all. She just sits there, playing house, polishing her heads, doing whatever she can to avoid responsibility. But the rest of us go without. See, nobody's passing judgement. Nobody's looking at legislation. Hell, nobody's maintaining the city. And so you're bringing that to her attention? Yeah. Look, I'm for the monarchy as much as the next person, but only while they're for us. Hmm? And if Languedere can't be bothered being in charge, then just let her step down and we'll put someone else there instead. The Republic of Ev! I wonder if Languedere even knows what's going on. What do you mean? I wonder if it was her that asked us for help. Look, if she's been thrown into the power following a crisis, she probably hasn't got a clue what she's doing. She hasn't been prepared for this or anything. She's probably terrified. You can relate, huh? A bit. Lion, stay here. Talk to the Evians. Distract them while we pop around inside the castle through that side door there. I'll do my best. Good luck. Come on, guys. Excuse me. Pardon me. So, Nanda, tell me more about this awful princess thing. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? There was nobody at the door, so we let ourselves in. Hope that was okay. We're looking for Princess Languedia. I'm Ozma. I've come from Oz to help. I think things are even worse than we thought. I know. This is the royal palace, then where are the servants, the guards? Where's their ombiambi to tell us off for dropping in like this? What sort of queen doesn't have attendants? Sort of queen that hasn't got the love of her people. Maybe they all quit. Maybe they all died. Don't forget, this is the same queen that had people killed over lunchboxes. Hello? I like how the Evians decorate their audience chambers. You're not talking about the couches and the artwork, are you? No. You're talking about the statues of metal people. What can I say? The Queen has taste. There's only one metal man statue, though. Naturally. One doesn't want to take these things too far, does one? A little bit of class can go a long way. You're unreal. Looks nothing like you anyway. It sort of does. It's made out of copper with keys and things sticking out of it. Well, it's not like Languidere is going to make actual statues of me for real, is she? There's writing on it. Let me just... Smith and Tinker's patent double action, extra responsible, thought creating, perfect talking mechanical man. Oh, my man. darling, darling Princess Ozma, how are you, my darling friend, my dear? Princess Languidia, I presume. Yes, my dear, it's been far too long. We haven't. Kiss, met. kiss, darling. Oh, right. Uh, these are my associates, the Scarecrow, and the Emperor of the Winkies, the Tin Woodman. Charmed, I'm sure. Tin Woodman, I see. How very, very shiny you are, my dear. Oh, thank you, I guess. You have a very impressive axe there, Mr. Woodman. Do you polish it daily? Oh, he's always cleaning the thing. Always polishing it up every day. Or well, twice a day sometimes, if he's been busy that morning. My, what a man. Uh, is everything okay, Your Highness? I can't help but to notice you're alone in here. What happened to your servants? Servants? Oh yes, I used to have those at one point, didn't I? Nanda! Nanda, are you there? I, I guess she's wandered off. I think we met her outside. You know, with the revolutionary crowds? Oh? Languidere, you don't have any idea what's happening right outside your doors, do you? Why would I want to look out there, darling? Goodness me, no. Please, allow me to show you more of inside my castle. You must have a tour. Well, actually, we wanted to know why you asked for help from the Emerald City. And why your wheelers are trying to kill people at the border. Yes, a tour! Please, Tin Woodman, allow me to take your arm so that I can better escort you through my little world. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on, sorry. Just need to pick this up. A feather, Your Highness. Don't want to leave that on the floor. Someone might trip. Ah, uh, yes, a feather. <laughs> Please pay no attention to it, silly things. You keep many chickens in your palace? Chickens? 
What? What chickens? Who said anything about chickens? I I haven't seen any chickens in months. I just mean because it's a chicken feather. Oh. Oh, is it? Oh, such a such a wise mind you have, my emperor. Oh, I can see we're going to have to keep an eye on you. Please, come along. I'm eager to have many discussions with you. Your Highness, I think we need to- Let her give us a tour, Tin Mudman. Indulge her and we might get some answers later. If you say so. Wonderful! Now, as you see, through here, these fabulous arches were designed by King Evering II, back in the Fourth Dynasty. Coming, Scarecrow? Hmm? Oh, you go ahead. I'm going to keep looking at this statue. I have an idea. Uh-oh. Shut up! Okay. We'll probably circle back later. You have fun. Mechanical man. Fitted with our special clockwork attachment. Thinks, speaks, acts, and does everything but live. Oh, that's so sad. Wonder if I should wind it back up again. Oh, look, there's some more instructions down here. Oh, you have no idea how bad it was in there. The things she's doing. She's not connected to the outside world at all. She she just lives in her own little heads doing doing whatever she wants. Heads? Blue? She has more than one head? Didn't you know? No, I... Uh, what's she doing, Nanda? Who is that princess? I told you everything. No, you haven't. I can see it in your face. You're holding something back. What aren't you telling me? Listen, I've seen things, Mr. Lyon. She's... Even I can't talk about it. Not even now. Nanda, if you don't tell me, how can we... What's going on? Oh, goodness. I, oh, I thought she'd killed her. I think... I think I can see... Is there someone in the window? Languedir can't even get that right. If you're going to kidnap someone, don't put them in a window-facing cell, you... Kidnap? Nanda, you have to tell me what's going on. Who's in that tower? Lion! It's me! It's me! No way. Right. If I read this incorrectly, then that must be his thinking mechanism wound up. Now for the key under his right arm for his speaking. There we go. You will not want to make an enemy of me. Where is the girl? It talks. It really talks. Please, answer my question. What? Oh, right. Um, I'm girl. Uh, do you mean Languidia? She went that way. No, I mean... Internal scan of castle complete. Rescue mode engaged. What? Rescue mode? Who are you rescuing? Please wind up my action immediately. It is a matter of life and death. It is? Well then... Scarecrow, where are the others? They're on a tour with the princess. What's going on, Lion? You won't believe who I've seen just now. And to the left, you'll find the Art Gallery of Ev, where my ancestors' portraits hang for the benefit of all the little insignificant... This way! Clockwork man, wait! Oh, so it does move. Is it magic? No. No, you woke it up! Why did you do that? Stand aside! Where have you got her, Languidia? Scarecrow, don't be so rude. We're guests. Yeah, what's going on, buddy? She's at the top of the highest tower. Further conversation with the princess is not required. I have found her location. Whose location? What's happening? Please, follow me. No, stop! I'm in charge of this place and I order you to stop! Stop! Ignoring the increasingly desperate cries of Princess Languidia, the strange mechanical man led us up to the staircase to the top of the tower, where a locked wooden door awaited us. Please, open this door! No! No! You can't make me! I refuse! Open the door, Languidia, or we'll force it open! Scarecrow, will you just explain? Give him the key! Here! Thank you! Quickly, Scarecrow! I knew it! Holy Lurleen! It's you! It's really you! Well, thank God for that! If you three took any longer to rescue me, I was going to really start complaining. Dorothy! Dorothy! Admit it. You missed me, didn't you? Voss, written and directed by Aaron Toman, based on the book by L. Frank Baum.
Starring Kirsten Page as Ozma, Cara Denison as Dorothy, Rob Lloyd as TikTok, Aaron Toman as the Scarecrow, Scobie Parker as the Tin Woodman, and Tom Denham as the Lion, with Steve Saul as King of Aldo, Sarah Golding as Nanda, David Nagel as Ombiambi, Mark Behrens as Jack Pumpkinhead, Philip Schofield as the Wheeler, and Caitlin Yoland as Princess Languadere. Other roles played by members of the cast. Australian sound recording by Daniel Burnett. Sound design by David Nagel and Aaron Toman. Music by Tony Diana. Adventure Production.